Dr. Emma Hit Nichols, and this is the new FDA approvals podcast for the week of September 18th through the 22nd. Hopefully this information is useful to you just to keep you updated. And if you know of any colleagues who might be interested, I would sure appreciate it if you would let them know about this podcast. Thank you. All right, so first up this week, we have the FDA has approved Jardiance or empagliflozin in patients with end-stage kidney disease. Jardiance is a sodium glucose co-transporter 2, SGLT2 inhibitor, used to treat type 2 diabetes and reduce the risk of cardiovascular death in patients with heart failure. It's also used to treat type 2 diabetes in patients with established cardiovascular disease. The latest approval for CKD was based on findings from the EMPA, EMPA kidney phase three trial, which showed that Jardian significantly reduced the risk of kidney disease progression and cardiovascular death relative to placebo. According to a press release from the manufacturers, Boehringer Engelheim and Eli Lilly, EMPA kidney is the first SGLT2 inhibitor CKD trial to demonstrate a statistically significant reduction in the risk of first and recurrent hospitalization in adults with CKD. Also this week, the FDA has granted priority review to Merck's new drug application for Wellerag, also called Belzutifan, for advanced renal cell carcinoma after immune checkpoint and anti-angiogenic therapies have been administered. Wellerag is an oral hypoxia-inducible factor 2-alpha, HIF-2-alpha inhibitor, and the first to be approved in the United States. Well, REG is currently approved for the treatment of adults with von hippel lindau disease who require therapy for associated RCC, central nervous system hemangioblastomas, or pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and do not require immediate surgery. The supplemental new drug application for advanced RCC is based on data from the Light Spark. 005 trial, and that's a randomized open-label phase 3 trial that's evaluating Wellerag compared to Everolimus or Afinador for the treatment of an advanced RCC that's progressed after prior treatment with PD-1, L1, or VEGF-TKI therapies, and either in sequence or combination. The FDA has set a PDUFA date of January 17th, 2024. And now a quick word from me about my company who is supporting this podcast. Attention all businesses in need of exceptional medical writing support. We're Nascent Medical and we are the solution. We are a team of skilled MD and PhD level medical writers who specialize in fast turnaround needs assessments, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more. Don't settle for anything less than pure excellence when it comes to your medical writing assistance. Just visit us at nascentmc.com. We're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing assistance. That's nascentmc.com. Also this week, the FDA has accepted for review a biologics license application, BLA, for Tislalizumab, also called Tevimbra, for use in frontline treatment of patients with unresectable, recurrent, locally advanced, or metastatic esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, ESCC. The application is supported by findings from the Phase three rationale 306 study, which showed an improved overall survival with the addition of tislalizumab to chemotherapy as a first-line treatment in patients with advanced or metastatic ESCC. Tislalizumab is a humanized EGG4 anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibody specifically designed to minimize binding to FC gamma receptors on macrophages. According to the manufacturer Beijing, tislalizumab is approved as a treatment for 11 indications in China and has already received approval in the EU for advanced or metastatic ESCC after prior chemotherapy. In the US, the PDUFA target action date is slated for the second half of 2024. And finally, this week, the FDA declined to approve a nasal spray that would have been the first needle-free emergency treatment for allergic reactions. A complete response letter from the FDA is requiring further tests from the manufacturer, ARS Pharmaceuticals. 
The nasal spray Nephi is being developed as an alternative to the EpiPen and other auto-injectors like Sanofi's OVQ filled with epinephrine. A positive advisory committee vote was given in May of this year when a panel of advisors voted 16 to 6 in favor of adults using Nephi and 17 to 5 in favor of children using the nasal spray. ARS Pharma said it expects to resubmit its application in the first half of 2024 with an FDA action date, likely in the second half of 2024, adding that it will appeal the decision. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. And again, please do tell your colleagues about this. I hope it's helpful to you. And hopefully you'll join me next week.